Well, praise the Most High today, family. We say praise the Most High today. Hallelujah. That ain't gonna work. It's been a while since I did recordings with my phone holding them with my hand. And I already see I'm not going to be able to hold it with my power hand. And this left hand is giving us a glare from the sun. Because the sun is on my right hand. So please forgive me. We're going to get somewhere and sit down in a minute. But I do hope everyone is well today. That you're able to get out yourself and enjoy this beautiful day. It's absolutely gorgeous here in the Carolina family. Couldn't have asked for a better day. Not at all. Pardon me. Sun is bright. It's nice and cool. Beautiful. Beautiful Carolina blue skies. <laughs> Nothing could be finer. Not at all, family. Not at all. I just had to get back out and get another walk in today. I felt so good yesterday. Getting up that little light sweat. Really felt good. And I do miss walking out here in the most highest creation communing with him I would dare ask you to try it <laughs> you might like it for those of us that don't get out and take a stroll every now and again I have a feeling that our, our Elohim speaks to us more when we're out in his creation. Now that's just my opinion. Car could be both ways. Whenever you get somewhere and sit down and get quiet, then you can hear from him a whole lot clearer too, but when I get out and hear the birds and the crickets singing to him, makes me feel really good. And it makes me become one with his creation and with him. If that makes sense. Well, family, I did have a very good idea I wanted to share today. And it came to me as I was watching an, another brother's recording yesterday evening. Hmm. Well, that was a good little walk there. Hmm. And I learned something in the rehab. They said if you're walking and you can still talk, then you need to speed up a little bit. And if you're you can't sing then you're right where you want to be. So if you're walking and talking, you may need to speed up a little bit, but if you're able to sing while you're walking, that's no good, you need to speed up a whole lot. I may have gotten that wrong. I think he said when you're walking and you're able to talk, then that's a good thing, but if you're able to sing, that's not a good thing. You need to speed up. However, we go, family. We got a good little brisk walk in. I thank the most I for it. And no, I'm not recording at all, simply because I'm walking through the public. And I don't like doing that anymore. Before, I didn't really care. But I don't like wasting words and having long periods of silence on my recordings where I'm just being quiet because I'm going past folks. 
And I guess more than anything else, it depends on how I'm being led. Because before I didn't care who, what they thought about what I was saying. But you do, you must be careful of your environment these days and know who's around you. That I do know. But this idea, family, is quite controversial, as the last few have been. What we're talking about today is God knows my heart. Sweet Jesus knows my heart. God knows my heart. We've all said it. I know I have. And even coming into the understanding of who we are as a people, as the text says we would in Baruch 2, it says, I knew, in my own words, because they're, they're such a stiff-necked people, they wouldn't listen to me until they get in the land of their captivities. Then they'll come to their remembrance. <laughs> Them heathen going to make you remember. Are you going to start asking questions like, why are we in the same position all over the earth? Then you hear the, the lies and the alibis that we're cursed because of something that our forefathers did to their father by looking at his nakedness and pouring it out. But that's a lie. That, that won't our people. That won't our people. We're the Shemites. We're the... um. Shemitic people. And the mother boys saying they are they they're from the tribe of Japheth, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm not. But the idea today is that the good Lord knows my heart. And I have an answer to that. He sure does. He sure does. But let's put some text on it. Cause this is a major problem for all of us, family. A major problem. And first, we're going to look at um, 1 Samuel 16 and 7. And it says, people look at the outward appearance, but the most high looks at the heart. Oh, boy. So we see right there that he's not only looking at, but judging the heart. See, he's, other folks look at your outer appearance, what you look like how you carry yourself. They try to figure out by that, the skin color. But the most high is looking at your heart, your character. How you handle yourself in different situations. See, he'll test that heart too. As um, David invited him to and said, in fact, that he did test him. He said, search me, oh God and know my heart. Test my thoughts. Uh-oh. Now you're getting real when you're asking me to test your thoughts. He said, if you find anything in me that's not pleasing to you, remove it. Then continue to lead me on on the right path. Now that's all in my, my own words. And we'll put that in the script, most I will. But then I want y'all to look at Jeremiah 17 and 9. This put the nail in the coffin of this attitude that I can do what I want to do and the most I will forgive me. Because that's what we're basically saying. And we've been bamboozled by the church to believe that. That you only had to come to him one time and ask him to forgive you. Forgive me for all my sins from the past and for the future. Which, which, of course, he's paid for it all, but you got to bring it to him. See, the Most High is like us, family. We don't, we don't forgive people that don't come and ask for forgiveness. No, you don't just forgive people willy-nilly because what they'll do is they'll just come back and do it again. And again and again until you come to your senses and hold people accountable for their mess like the Most High does. And you're saying I'm wrong already, and I feel that, but hold on, let's... Let's get to to our final script. And then you're going to hush up and be like, uh-oh, that, that boy got a point down. But the text says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And here we go. 
I, the most I search the heart, I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Uh oh, and on the text says that the most I don't change. We read the other day that Yahushua Mashiach is the same yesterday, today, and forget forever. And him being the living word of the most high, that means the most high is what he said yesterday don't change. No matter how men's doctrine try to change it up, it don't work. But then we looked at, um, and this is what I was saying. I, I was watching a recording on yesterday, family. And a young fellow was talking about hell, the lake of fire, hell being turned over into the lake of fire. And it said that everyone great and small will have their, will have to face judgment day. And that if their names aren't written, pardon me, in the Lamb's Book of Life, then they will be sent to hell, which would be turned into the lake of fire. So family, my, my big question is, so when you come to him, then your name is automatically written in the Lamb's Book of Life for good. And if that's so, why does the text say that the Most High is married to the backslider? So that means you can slip away. By saying a backslider, that means they can slip away and out of the good graces of the Most High. If they take hold of this silly doctrine that once saved, always saved, that you don't have to repent of your mess every time you, you do it. See, back when I was coming up in church, family, they held us accountable to them Ten Commandments. And see, that is how you're going to be judged. If not, tell me how you're going to be judged. I'll wait. How would the Most High judge you on Judgment Day? There has to be some kind of law if he's going to hold court. <laughs> Stop being silly, family. See, that's where we find ourselves at today, just being plain stupid and silly. We let these lying preachers who's after this money tell us a lie. That you don't have to worry about a thing. And the text in Timothy explains all of them. They're itching their preachers. They're going to tickle your ear with what you want to hear. Whatever fancies your, um, whatever you fancy. Whatever you, you like. Do whatever. It don't matter. Just do whatever. Just come back to me on Sunday morning. Let me lay a little holy oil on your head. And I'll forgive you. You'll be all right. Don't worry about God and his demands or the most high and what he demands. See, he demands holiness, family. The text says holiness without. No man can see the most high. Now, what does that mean? I'll wait on that answer, too. Because if you don't live holy, which means set apart. Now, what sets you apart? You're not going to see the most high. If you don't do, then he's not going to do. And if um, the standard was done away with, why would the Yahushua follow the standards? And why would Paul follow the standards? Who y'all say that he said it was done away with? And why, why would everybody come in before and after them followed the standard because it, it was it was the um the law it was what was given to them that set them apart holy and it's what set us apart also <laughs> set us apart as unholy and threw us in the lands of our captivities or should we say threw us out of our homeland into where we find now find ourselves now as we started off on the bottom of the totem pole worldwide. Pardon me, crying the blues. I wish, I wish, I wish. And what we have to remember, family, if we're suffering the sins of our fathers, then everybody got to suffer the sins of their fathers. Just like with 
with where we at, how we being mistreated as a people on the whole, and the Most High gathering us back into our own land. The people that um, treated us like they did, they're being punished now. And a lot of them say, why do we have to pay for what our forefathers did? A long, long time ago, and it wasn't no long time ago, it was just last year. By them laws they wrote into, um, by them bills they wrote into law, continuing the oppression, continuing the rich stay rich and the poor stay poor, or continuing, we'll keep it like this, the privilege, the white privilege. But the, the most high, his text says he's gonna judge them. And we're coming out with great substance. But all that's well and fine, but today's idea also is the judgment. What's up with this judgment day? And are you gonna be able to get before him and say, you know my heart. <laughs> oh boy, I guess a whole lot of folks in hell right now saying, the most high knows my heart. He still knows my heart. He loves me, he's gonna rescue me. Oh boy. No, they're not. They're saying I was guilty, I was wrong, I didn't do what I, I was told to do. I didn't follow the law, statutes, and commands like I was told to do. And really, they're, they're, they're saying they didn't follow what their conscience told them not to do. Their conscience said, don't do that. You say, I'm going to do it anyway. I want to do it. That's what I want to do, and I'm going to continue to live like I want to live. I'm my own man. I'm self-made, okay? We're going to see who made you when you return back to him. And he said, I don't know you. When did you do this, that, and other when I told you to do it? You didn't. Then folks are going to say, well, my pastor said. He was like, uh-uh. I said, study to show yourself approved. See, that's just like when you hear somebody like me tell you the truth. You want to bash my head in because it's going against everything you've been taught and everything you want to do. You still want to have it your way like old Burger King. <laughs> you want to rule. <laughs> but you can't sit on the throne. Oh boy. But the Most High knows my heart. And a lot of us bring that, that mentality into the truth. Into our new belief set. And we're supposed to be casting off all that old mess. And we're coming with the mentality, well, he knows my heart. And I have done it. I have done it. And had to hurry up and get um, punished for it. Or discipline is the better word. You're like, yeah, I know your heart. I'm judging everything you do. Just like the text says, we're going to be judged for everything we say and do in these bodies. And what is the, um, what is the, um, what's the word, family? What's the, um, the standard that he's judging us by and holding us up to? His laws, statutes, and commands, which first starts with those 10 commandments. If we would just follow those 10, family, we'll be okay because that's the foundation for all the rest. We're going to let that be our time, family. I appreciate you taking this little stroll with me and sharing this idea with me. I pray the most I will continue to bless and keep you, continuing to give you eyes to see, ears to hear, a heart to perceive, and therefore a mouth to speak boldly. And I pray that our family members will get it. Mm, pardon me. That the most I will take the scales from my eyes. Let's get on back to this truck. Praise the most high. So the question for today would be, if the most high knows my heart, and he's holding me up to a certain standard and judging this heart of mine, then should not be trying to live up to the standard he's calling me to. 
And that's a good question. And the answer is yes. Not only for you, my brother or sister, but for old Robert too. Mm. I gotta do right too. And as I mentioned before about that conscience, that goes further than that. That's why when you come to him, you ask him for the rock God the Holy Spirit, who's going to lead you into all truth. Who's not only going to tell you when you're wrong, but he's going to tell you what's right. Like I said, that's going to be our time. Do stay up and keep pushing forward in the right direction. Shalom.